Welcome back to Obscure Broadcasting's podcast, Famous Last Words. I'm Andrew Alden. I'm Teresa Alden. And today we're talking about Dan Gilroy's new movie, Velvet Buzzsaw. Roll the trailer. Sober hasn't been good for him. Pierce was in the full bloom of alcoholism here. Exactly. Never should have quit drinking. No originality. No courage. This is a movie that made big waves at Sundance, I believe. I believe it it premiered at Sundance and then almost instantly went up on Netflix after its festival debut. Um, Dan Gilroy is a a director you really like, or you at least really like his first movie, which was Nightcrawler. Yeah, which also starred Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, Neither of us saw Roman J. Israel Esquire, um, but that got movie uh, kind of panned by... Uh, critics, uh, but Nightcrawler got really, really great reviews, and this is getting an extremely mixed bag of reviews. Um, what did you think of this movie? Well, should we we should probably tell them what it's about. Oh, yes. Which is a little hard to do, but... Um, yeah, without giving too much away. Uh, do you want me to try? Go. <laughs> uh, so, Velvet Buzzsaw is about Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, it's an ensemble movie. It's not just about... It's not just following Jake Gyllenhaal, but it's a ensemble cast with Rene Russo and Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, a mysterious artist's work is found after he dies. You forgot John Malkovich. Oh, and John Malkovich is in this movie. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so it's about art criticism of these kind of paintings that were found by somebody that works at... um, Rene Russo's gallery, and it delves kind of into like the pretension of the art world and the craziness of the art world, and it kind of goes into psychological thriller or just th- straight thriller. Uh, it's an interesting movie. It definitely kind of I wasn't super excited. I didn't really know about this movie, and we kind of just watched it on a whim. I didn't even know it was by Dan Gilroy until like halfway through. We're like, who directed this? Yeah, we definitely went into watching this film with like zero expectations. We had just heard of it. Um, we knew Jake Gyllenhaal was in it, and I didn't know until like the opening credits that John Malkovich was in it, which was a surprise. Uh, a a good delightful one. surprise. A delightful surprise, because we are also we're really big fans of the movie Art School Confidential, where he also plays like a weird modern artist. Modern artist. Um, yeah, he's a modern artist. Yeah, yeah, modern yeah. Artist. He's a teacher, but it, I th- I thought this movie directly. I kind of just pictured that this movie and that movie were kind of in the same universe, that they both had like similar things <laughs> going on. Like they're both quirky and, and bizarre and dark, mm-hmm. uh, dark comedies. Um, I thought that this movie was actually like a lot of fun and, and it was suspenseful and it needed to be suspenseful. And I thought the art direction was great, uh, pun intended, I guess. <laughs> um, I thought that. It's not a movie that a lot of people liked. Right before we rolled, I checked it's at 5.8 on IMDb. Um, mm. So it's getting pretty burnt there, at least. Um, I can definitely see why people wouldn't like it. It's definitely like off kilter and a little weird. And and it's not like fantastically weird where people are raving about it because it's so weird. Like It's definitely falling in the middle of like traditional film and just like odd and weird and i i definitely think nightcrawler kind of had the same a similar tone um Mm -hmm. it's like not over the top well it's it is over the top but it's not too far out there that where like um it has a reputation for being that way or or the director does like the i can never remember his name but the guy who did the lobster uh yorgos lathamos he like has this huge reputation for being just like super absurd and dry humor and dark comedy and sort of surrealist almost yeah and so i think this someone this director in this movie some falls somewhere in between like he's not on like that end of the scale but he's definitely not like on like a mainstream side no no i don't this isn't like a movie if you're looking for like a jake gyllenhaal you know whatever you know dreamboat movie this is not you know he's bizarre and and bisexual and it does have like this i would say that's even more absurdist and more fantastic than the lobster i think that you know and it's i mean it, it's directly referencing that more um it's, yeah. it's very much in your face like this is not 
a hundred percent reality. Yeah, but it's not like like theater of the absurd where it's like. Or that's what the lobster reminds me of is like something like super dry and like I don't know how to explain it, but it's yeah, like it's definitely it's a in a way it's almost like a horror film. So in in the sense of horror films, you have to like believe the unbelievable. But I think the lobster is more like or other films like that are more just like every sentence that comes out of a character's mouth is like unbelievable. Right. And that this was like the real world with a weird incident, a weird supernatural thing. Right. Well, the difference between this and like a Yorgos Lathamos movie is they're all just very readily the lobster killing the sacred deer. They're readily accepting the bizarreness of the world and they're and the characters are in on it. In this movie, the characters aren't in on it. They expect to live in a grounded reality Mm -hmm. and their reality is set askew by the fantastic elements. Whereas I think in lots of most movies, the weirdness, the bizarre is part of the, like part of the world that the characters live in and acknowledge, especially in the lobster. Yeah. And I think that directly affects the feedback of this movie. I think like sometimes people really want to like fall, have things fall into categories and like, a category of like absolutely bizarre to the w- point where like characters like are um like you said like um like the character everything is this weird world but this film is like everything's reality except for like this one supernatural thing and sometimes that can hurt movies because people aren't they want it to be one way or the other for some reason yeah for sure and and I think this movie worked. I mean, in general, I like this movie, and I and uh, I forgot to mention Tony Collette's in this movie. You know, oh, Tony yeah. Collette had a good last year. She was busy doing Hereditary in this movie, and who knows what else. Um, Her character feels very random, though, and not as like thought through. It was hard to like connect. I feel like there's a key with. scene missing from that explains like what Tony Collette is up to. They make reference mm-hmm. that she's like. At least at the beginning, she works at the, like a modern museum of art, and then she doesn't want to work there anymore. She's going out on her own, and she somehow is connected to Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know, just through the art world, but they seem to have like more of a connection. Like they're, you know, looking out for each other. And I don't know. Tony Collette did seem kind of like ham fisted in the story that they needed someone else, another body, and I mean that in every pun in a sense, <laughs> uh, to be involved. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, it doesn't run for very long it's only like an hour and i felt like it was only like an hour and a half it didn't it was a good length it was yeah it was a good length but i I wonder if they took out the tony collette character whether it'd be almost too short yeah i could see now that you say that something's missing from her character because i think the writing in general did a really good job of balancing out all the different characters um because there's jake gyllenhaal there's what's her name renee russo renee russo um and then who's the one that finds all the paintings i forget her name i will have to look up her name or here let me look it up right now okay do 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 Ashton is the woman that finds... What is it? Zwe. Zwe. Z-A-W-E Ashton. A-S-H-T-O-N. Who is also in a movie where she worked at an art gallery in a much in a bit role in... Um, Nocturnal Animals. Nocturnal Animals. She played um, Amy Adams' assistant mm-hmm. in that movie. And, yeah, go ahead. So sorry. it's like the three of them. And then I'd say Tony Collette and John Malkovich are like sort of smaller... Oh, and that other guy, too. So there's, like, three major characters and, I think, three slightly smaller characters. David Diggs is, like, the other hip artist. That yeah. Like, yeah. So um, I do think they did a good job balancing that out, except for maybe Tony Collette's character. Like, I definitely feel like something's missing. Yeah, I mean, I felt like the movie could have just been the the Zoe, Zowie, Zawi, Ashton character, Jake Gyllenhaal, and... Rene Russo and it would have been a complete kind of like these in the assistant the woman the woman that played assistant played by um Natalie Dyer Dyer 
she mm-hmm. like oh, those right. all those characters just seem like they all have like, their place and they are connected to the story. And Tony Collette was very like ancillary to like that. It slowed it down almost. Mm-hmm. Not to say that Tony Collette wasn't great in every scene that she was in. And her last scene was really great. Her too. last scene was really great. <laughs> um, I thought this movie was good. Uh, we, I think we should go to a, a more traditional grading system. Uh, What's our? Our grading system now is on a scale of one to four. Um, but I think we should just give oh. it a grade. Let's give it a grade. What? Okay. Okay. What's wrong with our rating system? It's convoluted. I like our convoluted system. Okay. Okay. What would you give it on a normal rating? Then? I'm going to give it a B, B minus, like an 83 out of 100, basically. I'll give it a B. That's a B. That's a B. I was very familiar with that grade in high school. Yeah. That was my classic grade. Okay. Um, hmm. I say it's a B. A B? Solid B. I, I'm excited to see what Dan Gilroy does next. I think he's ex- fun. his movies are fun to watch. I definitely want to go back and watch yeah. Roman J. Israel again. Yeah. Because I, I like Nightcrawler a lot, and I'm, I like this movie almost as much. So I'm excited cool. to see the other one. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Andrew Alden. I'm Teresa Alden. And uh, if you like us, like us on uh, SoundCloud or on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you subscribe, subscribe. We have new reviews, new content coming out all the time. So thank you so much for watching.